What's going on guys? Welcome to the Two Wheeled Rider YouTube channel. My name is Mario Orsini and today I'm back with another motorcycle review. So today I have a 2019 Ninja 400 ABS model courtesy of the good folks over at JT Motorsports located in Frederick, Maryland. Right now they're off Urbana Pike, but they're soon going to be moving over off of Tilco Drive. Uh, it's a lot nicer facility, so depending on when you're watching this, be sure to check their website before going over to visit them. So as I do with all my motorcycle reviews, we're going to start out with the specs of the bike. Then we're going to run through all the features where I show you how things work on them. We're going to go out and test it on the road. And I'm going to give you my final thoughts, and then we'll come back here to wrap up the review. So let's start out with the engine on this bike. This is a 399cc parallel twin liquid cooled dual overhead cam engine putting out mid 40s horsepower though Kawasaki hasn't released those actual stats and also putting out 28 pound feet of torque. This is an electronically fuel injected engine with twin 32 millimeter throttle bodies. All of that power is going to go back through a six speed transmission to a final chain drive. Moving up to the front of the bike, we have a 41 millimeter non-adjustable front fork with 4.7 inches of suspension travel. We also have a 17 inch front wheel, I believe it's a 110 width on the front tire. And then we have a single disc twin piston caliper on the front and again it is ABS front and rear on this motorcycle. Moving to the rear of the bike, we have a mono shock. There is preload adjustability, 5.1 inches of travel. We also have a single disc on the back, I believe it's 300. 20 millimeter with a twin piston caliper and yes once again abs and then we have a 17 inch wheel on the back with a 150 60 17 tire the bike comes from the factory with dunlop sport max tires front and rear let me hit up a few more of the specs and then we'll move on to the features so this has a relatively low seat height coming in at 30.9 inches i am 5 foot 10 with a 32 inch inseam i've got all kinds of room to get my feet flat with a nice bend in my knee you've got 5.5 inches of ground clearance with a 3.7 gallon fuel tank the wet weight of this bike comes in at 366 pounds full of fuel it's about five pounds heavier than the non abs model and it comes with a 12 month warranty one year warranty but through kawasaki if you want you can extend it out to 24 36 or 48 months one last thing i want to touch on is the maintenance schedule on this bike after the 600 mile break-in basically you're doing oil changes at 7500 miles and then you're doing your major service at a right around 15,000 miles where you're going to do the valve checks and things of that nature so not a whole lot of maintenance to be done on this bike you've got some pretty good intervals now that we've gone over the specs now we're going to move on to some of the features i'm going to break them down for you and you know show you how this thing works all right so let's start out with the display we do have, it is key actuated we don't have a fob on this bike like some of the newer bikes we've got an lcd display it's uh it's black with the with it, it's opposite of a lot of lcd displays it's black with the lcd light however you want to say it uh, we've got the uh, odometer up here in the corner uh, if we hit this button here we don't we actually have to touch the screen it's not like some of the newer bikes where you can operate it from the uh from the hand controls we do have two trip odometers oops i'm hitting the wrong button it's the top button we've got two trip odometers and then we just go back to odometer down here this is your real-time fuel mileage if we hit this button on the left again uh, that gives you your average since you last reset it and then this gives you your fuel range because the bike's off it's not showing anything right now you obviously have a digital uh, speedometer you have a digital gear indicator which is nice and large easy to see while you're riding you've got a clock if you come over here you've got an array of idiot lights uh, you can see your turn signal up top there we're in neutral right now and then you end this up with an analog tachometer so that's pretty much it for the display if we come over here to the controls pretty simple stuff over here we've got low beam we've got high beam we've got our turn signals they're not auto canceling so if you want to cancel it you got to push it back in you've got the horn and then if we look right over here, we've got one of the little passing lights that's going to flash the high beam. Staying over here on this side, you see it's a cable actuated clutch. This is about the easiest pull of clutch you're ever going to find. So real easy to operate. Come over here to the right hand side of the bike. You've got your kill switch. You've got your starter button. And uh, you do have hydraulic brakes uh, both front and rear. That's pretty much it for the cockpit. Other than uh, your fuel cap right here, it's controlled by key. And uh, pretty simple. 
So one last thing I want to show here on the cockpit, I don't know this for sure, but it looks like there's a cutout already built in if you wanted to do a power outlet here, which would be pretty simple because the wiring is right underneath this panel. So if you wanted something to be able to plug your GPS in or your cell phone or, or whatever, I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. And it's nice that they went ahead and implemented that into the plastic so you don't have to drill one out yourself. All right, so if we come back here to the back of the bike, this is something that probably a lot of people aren't gonna notice, but you actually do have some tie-down hooks right here on the back on both sides. So if you want to hook up a bungee net or, or use some rock straps or whatever, you've got that. Obviously, you'd hook them up down here. This would be a good point, or maybe even up here uh, to affix them to the front. Let's pop the seat off the back and see what we've got under there. All right, so in order to pop the seat off, the key is right here. We're just gonna turn this and it's gonna pop right off. All right, so with the seat off the bike, there's not a whole lot to see. Uh, if we pop this little panel here though, there may be a tool kit that goes in here. I'll have to check with the guys, uh, but you do have a little bit of storage space down here. They may have just not put the tool kit in for the purposes of today. Uh, we also have right here, uh, you can hook the uh, D-ring of your helmet on there. So you've got a helmet lock on both sides and then to lock it on the bike, you obviously just pop the seat back on and uh, you can keep your helmets protected while you're off the bike. Now, I don't know how well it's going to show up today, but this is obviously a black motorcycle, but it's got this cool metal flake in it. Really nice looking paint job on this bike. And I did show it does have passenger pegs. We're probably not going to test a passenger out on the bike today, but we'll see. We'll give a look back here of what the uh, rear tail light section or rear, rear tail section looks like on the bike. Let me go ahead and get it kicked on. So hopefully you can see the lights a little bit. You can see we've got an LED tail light. These are not LED turn signals. And if we come up here to the front, we can also see we have an LED headlight, but again, we do not have LED turn signals. Just one other thing I want to mention, you do have a spot here from the factory already welded on. You can spin your spools in if you want to use a rear wheel stand on it. All right, now we're going to give you a warm start up on the bike so you can see what it sounds like. Sounds about like a sewing machine, nothing real loud. All right, so let me share with you some of my impressions about this uh, 2019 Ninja 400. I gotta be a little careful today, but a hard downpour last night, so there's a lot of dirt and debris and stuff in the road. All right, so let's just get one thing out of the way. I am not going to use the B word to describe this bike and call it a beginner bike. I'm going to be nice, and we're going to refer to it as a small displacement sport bike, because that's what it is. Could a beginner start on this? Yeah, sure, but uh, an expert level rider can also have a ton of fun on a small displacement sport bike, especially one like this. All right, so let's talk about the engine first. It doesn't make a ton of power, but it makes enough power to make it fun. What's really cool and what's really fun about a bike like this is you can go out and just wring its neck and push it to its limit, depending on what your skill level is. Uh, unlike, you know, the, the 160, 180 horsepower bikes that at least out on the street, you're not really gonna push them to their limits. But a bike like this, you can get it much, much closer to its limit out on the street. That's what makes it kind of fun. The, the fuel delivery on it is as smooth as possible. There's no bugginess in the fuel injection whatsoever. It's, it's one of the smoothest ones I've ridden. When it, uh, the, the transmission itself, uh, obviously you've got this really easy clutch pull on it, which makes it really nice for downshifting. I don't really use the clutch much for upshifting, but the transmission is, you know, it's like butter. I mean, it just shifts right into gear. It requires absolutely no effort. There's no clunkiness there. It's just a really smooth shifting machine. I just got to try out the brakes, which I'll talk about here in just a moment. So let's talk about the brakes. You look at it and you go, well, we'll only have one disc on the front. It's 320 millimeter, but it's only a twin piston caliper. But you do have ABS, which I'll talk about that more in a moment. Uh, but the brakes do a really good job on this bike. I think if you were to go out and track it, I think some guys may look into upgrading to twin disc or, or maybe a four piston caliper on the front or at least stainless steel brake lines like or different pads or some things you could do. But for your regular street riding purposes, they're more than adequate to get the bike stopped or get the bike slowed down to set you up for the next corner. Yeah, so I wanted to go back to ABS for just a minute. Um, it's not intrusive on this bike. Uh, you know, I really haven't even felt it kick on. Me personally, would I order this bike with ABS? No, I'd save the two, three, four hundred dollars, whatever it is for the upgrade to it. 
and just get the non-ABS version. It's also five pounds lighter. Uh, but if you're a beginning motorcyclist, it's probably a good idea to get the ABS. I don't really have, when it comes to the tires, I don't really have so much to say about them. I've had to scrub these in a little bit because they were brand new. Uh, road conditions are not perfect today, so I'm not really going to push it too far. But, you know, for stock tires, they do a decent enough job. And, they, you know, this, these types of tires are going to give you some pretty good, uh, pretty good traction, but also some pretty good wear. Now, before I talk about the suspension, just so you guys know, I weigh in at about 170 pounds without my gear on. So take that into account when I'm giving you my opinion on the suspension. Personally, I like fully adjustable suspensions because it allows me to tune it in for different conditions, be it track or street or just whatever maybe you're gonna ride two up but this one doesn't have any adjustability that said it, it's actually surprisingly good for a bike in this price range um, it really only you know if you go over like the harshest of road imperfections you will get a little bit of jarring off of it but otherwise it's supple enough though if you come down on the brakes hard to set up for a corner it's not too soft they've sprung this thing right at least for me for someone around my weight if you're heavier you know your mileage may vary if you're lighter you may not like it as much but if you're around 170 pounds and you're just going to go out and run some country back roads i think you're going to find the suspension pretty good and also i had it out on the interstate it was fine out on the interstate it was comfortable enough out there and just so you guys know just to kind of talk about the engine again for another second at 80 miles an hour on the interstate it was tacking a little less than 8,000 rpms and for a bike that doesn't redline until 12 it wasn't too buzzy when it comes to the bike's handling it's pretty neutral although tip in it tips in a little bit quicker than than a lot of bikes i've ridden and then it then it just becomes kind of linear at that point where it's it's really predictable but initial tip in's a little quick on it and then it's, then it's a pretty neutral handling bike you know it doesn't have all the new rider aids and all the cool stuff uh the semi-active suspension and stuff like some other bikes i've ridden it's just a simple suspension system but it works really well so now that i'm stuck behind this truck for a second let's talk about ergos um they're surprisingly good uh is this a bike you're going to cross country trip on for most people probably not but the ergos are actually pretty comfortable i don't really have any real pressure on my wrist I don't have any pressure on my lower back the seat is a sport bike seat but it's one that's shaped pretty well i have even though you know this isn't a very big bike and it doesn't have a very uh tall seat height on it i don't really feel like my legs are cramped up even mine i'm 5 10 32 inch inseam so it might be different for you but it's actually pretty comfortable about the only thing and and even the windshield out on the interstate does a pretty good job of getting the wind to your chest to uh to take a little bit of pressure off your lower back because you are leaned over a little bit the only negative i've noticed on it ergo wise is under hard braking uh you know i try to squeeze the tank with my legs but it's a lot of painted area here and the way the seat shaped it seems to want to jam my uh i will just say my groin into the tank uh, so probably one thing i would do to the bike is get some sort of tank pads for the side of it to provide me with a little bit more grip so uh you know i'm not sliding into the tank under hard braking otherwise it's, it's surprisingly comfortable. It really is to be such a small motorcycle and still give you decent enough leg room and you don't feel like you're cramped up on it. So I've kind of gone over, you know, how the transmission shifts and the brakes, how well they work and the suspension and the handling and, and the ergos and stuff. Um, I'll touch on the dash for a second. It's very simple to read. There's nothing, you know, fancy about it, but it does its job and it's got everything on there you need. It might just be missing a thing or two that you might want. And that theme kind of goes on for the whole bike. Obviously, this bike was built at a specific price point. Um, you know, depending on which model you get, they start out right around $5,000, which is a pretty fair price for a brand new motorcycle. But what they've done that I like is, yes, there's some things you don't have. You don't have adjustable suspension. You don't have the latest TFT display. Um, you know, there's some other features that you don't have, like electronically adjustable suspension and all this stuff that comes with more high-end motorcycles. They may not have given you every single option but what they did give you is good stuff and you know everything on here is pretty quality the fit and finish is great it's right up there with the other japanese bikes um it's a it's a well-built motorcycle and to me it's a cool looking motorcycle one thing kawasaki's done that i really like is the styling on this bike you know it used to be small displacement sport bikes they kind of look like girl bikes and everybody knew it you could just tell from the styling where now you've got the same aggressive styling the 
the 600, the 650, the 1000, you know, the larger displacement bikes have. So, and you also got LED headlights and taillights. Sure, you don't have the turn signals, but that's okay. You know, you've got good visibility on the bike. People are going to be able to see you and it's a good looking motorcycle, at least in my opinion. So I don't really have anything negative to say about the bike. Everything it's supposed to do, it does well. Is it a 1000cc sport bike with all the latest and greatest? No. It's a nice sport bike you can buy for around $5,000 that does what it says it's going to do. Which leads me to, you know, kind of close up with who's the target market for this bike? Well, I said I wasn't going to use the B word, but obviously beginners are going to look into this bike. And if you are a beginner and, and you want to ride a sport bike, this would probably be a good one. It's got enough power to uh, keep you from getting in too much trouble, but still enough power to get you out of trouble, if you know what I mean. But I think another uh, segment of the industry that might want to look at this are guys like me guys that you know already have other motorcycles that are for per other purposes like touring or off-roading or whatever and maybe just want a cheap and when i say cheap price wise a cheap motorcycle to go out and do track days on or go out and ride you know do some sport riding with your buddies on sunday morning this thing especially if you're hitting up back roads should be able to hang with a lot of sport bike riders i think you'd surprise a lot of guys on 600s and 650 twins and stuff even though you're not making as much power this thing will handle you can carry good corner speed with it and uh you know it'd be fun when you stop for breakfast to uh tease your buddy a little bit out about how you beat him and you've got 30 less horsepower so I think that's really kind of, you know, the two types of people that are looking for it. Obviously, you could commute on this bike and do all sorts of things. It gets extremely good fuel mileage. But, you know, I think I think new new motorcyclists that want to ride sport bikes and uh, guys that just have a little bit of extra cash laying around, they don't want to spend a whole lot, but they want a nice quality machine to go out and have a little bit of fun on from time to time. I think that's who should be looking at them. All right, guys, so those are my impressions of this Ninja. We are going to head back to the shop and wrap this review video up. Oh yeah, and one last thing, we are not going to test it with a passenger on the back of that. I don't have one available, and let's be honest, this bike wasn't really designed with a passenger in mind. Alright guys, so those are my thoughts on the 2019 Ninja 400 ABS, but as always, you don't have to take my word for it, and that's why I suggest you go ride one yourself if you're interested in this bike. Uh, and you can go ride one at JT Motorsports. Once again, big thank you to those guys for providing me the opportunity to ride this bike today. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, considering that subscribe button because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any questions about this bike, I'll do my best to answer them. Just let me know down in the comment section below, and as always, I'll talk to you again soon.